all right guys welcome to another black mass adventure this time i have traveled i'm out in the middle of the woods as y'all can see in the mountains of east tennessee on the border of north carolina now I'm out here for a very special reason. So, growing up in Tennessee, and growing up in the mountains, we were always told of, <clears throat> take a little break here, of stories of the Appalachian feral people. Now, a lot of stories indicated that there is a group of individuals that during the Great, De Great Depression decided that it would be better to live off the land in the mountains of East Tennessee and Western North Carolina. Now, these, this group of feral people is what they're called, uh, have been known to have cannibalistic tendencies. There was a famous case of a boy with a, uh, his last name was Martin, that went missing. His disappearance affected the community so, so much that the United States government actually brought in the Green Berets to search for him. So when the Green Berets went into the mountains, to search for this missing boy, they apparently had come across these individuals. Now recently, uh, there has been an increase of reportings of these people. They are supposedly known to set traps to capture lone hikers in the mountains. Um, they have targeted uh, the elderly and uh, children, specifically I'm assuming because, you know, they wouldn't fight back as much. So they're also known to hide in the trees, to set traps, uh, and they have developed their own way of communication through clicks, like a clicking sound. Uh, there's a lot of tribes that we know of in Africa that communicate this way as a means to uh, communicate with each other, to notify them that there's prey around. So I'm putting myself uh, in this situation to see what I can come up with. Now, I'm actually a little bit more south this time around. I have been up in the Smokies in East Tennessee, such as Townsend area, uh, Gatlinburg, uh, places like that. But recently, I read a story of a person who encountered one of these feral people right where I'm at. So I've came out here, and I'm going to dig around and see what I, what I can find. Now, I would not recommend doing this at all. Because the best case scenario here is that I run in to a bear or some boar, which I've already, I ran into about 50 head of boar earlier today. Now, worst case scenario, I run into this group and they attack me. Or I could get lost. I'm in the mountains. But a little bit about me, I, I do come from a military background. Uh, in the military, I made maps and roads. So my navigation skills are above the average person. So I'm very comfortable coming out here to do this type of stuff. So guys, we're going to take a walk through the, these mountains, see what kind of evidence I can find, and we'll go from there. All right. Here we go.
<clears throat> All right, guys. So I am deep in the mountains now. Obviously, I'm surrounded by this beautiful trillium. I absolutely love this stuff. So I wanted to take a second and maybe recount some of the stories that are going around about these feral people. So there was a couple that had gone into one of, in, into one of these national parks. They had parked their car and got out to go to this waterfall. Now on this waterfall, climbing up the side, they saw a man completely naked. Uh, they described him as hairier than average from the waist down and his face covered in blood and another aspect of this that I think is important is a lot of these reports talk about their eyes their eyes are like really sunk into their head like they have really bad developed cataracts there was another story that a little boy and his brother came up to the mountains on a family vacation they went out to one of the rivers to go fishing and as they're walking up the the trail they saw again another naked man with white eyes a very deformed face and head his arms were longer than normal again completely naked hairier than normal from the waist down sorry I just started smelling something Okay, that's weird. I mean, I guess there's a possibility there's other people out here. But I feel like there's something following me. Now guys, I worked as a park ranger. So I'm very familiar with the different types of animals, how to handle them, what kind of animals these are that are around here. Um, I know their smells, I know I can really even identify the way that they breathe. And what I'm smelling right now isn't, isn't normal. It smells like garbage. Okay, I'm going to walk down this trail a little bit. Make sure that I'm not alone. And then I'll get back to some of these stories. Hold on. Okay, I am 100% hearing something. So this is the area where recently a local had told me that they had seen someone or seen one of these feral people. It's absolutely beautiful though. Look at that. Just kind of take this in for a second.
so beautiful. Okay, uh, I'm gonna have to get across this river. So, uh, I'm gonna have to put my camera up for just a second. Somebody's been stocking stones. All right, I'm gonna try not to drop my camera, so hold on. Okay guys, so I've made it to the other side of this river and I'm seeing what it looked like to be bear footprints. Not bears in the animal, but like humanoid type footprints. Um, so they're smaller than mine, as you can see. They're quite a bit smaller. So it looks like they went here and then heel here. Pad. It's pretty interesting. So I do have a lot of tracking experience and when I'm not it's weird because it's not I mean y'all can see this is all gravel that I'm on this isn't something you'd be walking barefoot in I don't know whoa I just heard like a female voice. I bet you all heard that too. Because I was recording. I don't know. It's kind of hard to hear with this river. I'm going to get moving. Hold on. Y'all hear those clicking noises? shit I don't want to move I gotta get out of here phone stopped recording it for some reason. I'm being followed by something. Okay. Y'all, um, at this point, uh, I'm gonna have to stop recording. I'm gonna try to get up past maybe to an overlook or something so I can get a better view of what's below me because I'm hearing these clicking noises and I've just had this feeling that I'm being followed so hang on okay so I've made it to the top of the highest point I could find just to get a downward angle see where I'm at because so y'all can see I am I am out there and that's just straight cliff see the top of the mountains big old tree all the way around me Pretty amazing place anyway. What the freaking heck? 
I swear somebody was just walking up behind me. I don't know. Okay, so a continuation of the um, the stories. So there was this family that was uh, a pretty rural family that lived uh, in the mountainside. And one night they had gone out. Uh, it was the mother and the daughter. They went out. Uh, in the backyard, they were going to start a bonfire when they heard some sort of rustling in the uh, the woods behind them. Now, obviously, their first thought would be maybe a bear, uh, maybe a deer, something like that. You know, we do have a lot of animals around here like that. Um, but when they decided to walk, uh, walk over and kind of look at it at a little bit be better angle, that's when they saw again another man that had an extremely deformed face this time. Uh, they described it as like the whole right side of his face was like from the guy from Goonies. Um, can't think of his name. Y'all remind me his name. But anyway, um, he was on the edge of the property. Uh, looking down and again, he was completely naked uh, His arms longer than usual uh, He was extremely hairy from the chest down this time uh, His he they said he had a full beard those cataract white eyes and His face was covered in blood, but this time he had something in his hand So what they described to it what they described it as being is a part of a deer so that tells me that these people have the ability to either track trap or capture larger animals with their bare hands because the underlying thought is they haven't developed into the stone age yet so they're not using these advanced tools. Now, another theory that people have talked about uh, with the Appalachian feral people is they are basically just a, a really inbred group of people that just never have experienced society. Um, <clears throat> obviously, uh, throughout world history, we've known of tribes uh, that have not entered modern technology. They've never seen a camera, never uh, even flying over this. these tribes are extremely dangerous because um, they just try to kill you, plain and simple. And here I am, out in the mountains of North Carolina, looking for one of these people. Um, so, <laughs> with that being said, guys, um, I'm gonna keep on moving. Uh, I've got a an area down here that I want to check out. Now I was also where I'm at. Okay, is moonshine territory. Okay, so after prohibition, uh, everybody in this area made moonshine. Everybody did. Uh, it's a part of. It's a part of our culture. I, I would like to consider myself a part of that culture, uh, being from East Tennessee. And the stories that the moonshiners have of these people are pretty amazing. So there's this one story of a moonshiner. He was out running his still, uh, obviously in the middle of the night, where he was approached by three of these Appalachian feral people. He described them uh, all as being naked, uh, but this time there was a female with him. So what was interesting was that he described the female as being more of the, the, uh, the, the lookout, the kind of leader that was 
trying in a way I would have guessed to distract the male moonshiners now I'm not saying that there haven't been any female moonshiners because um, I know there's plenty of females that make some damn fine liquor but at the time it was mainly the males in the woods so there's a possibility that these feral people were trying to distract the, the moonshiners so that they could attack but uh, moonshiners are pretty crafty people um, <clears throat> they were able to use some of the liquor some of the to create a larger fire to scare off the uh, incoming Appalachian feral people so now again you know these stories are well I mean I guess they are just stories at the end of the day you know um, I would love to be able to try to find some way of proving that these individuals are out there uh, so I've I, I'm trying to do a multiple part series into uh, the Appalachian feral people because it's a part of a part of East Tennessee you know it was something that I, I even grew up hearing about so um, whether or not they were stories to just scare your kids at night to make sure that they're extra careful in the woods or um, I don't know maybe just to be bad parents <laughs> who knows uh, but you know the way that I look at the world is that these stories aren't just going to come from nowhere. There's people that have had direct encounters with these people. Um, and they all describe the same thing. Mainly males, longer arms, cataract eyes, a deformed head. And, you, you know, it's a possibility that within these rural communities that the inbreeding happened. You know, that's that's... You know, if you look throughout um, the Appalachian culture, there's, uh, you know, you've got the Mountain Dew people. Um, you've even got the Blue people. Um, there, there's so much of our history that we, a lot of the times, just kind of label as a ghost story or a conspiracy theory or, or something. But these stories, they have to come from somewhere, y'all. And I'm going to try to find out if they're real or not. So, guys, if you all are new to my channel, thank you for coming over. I can't tell you how grateful I am uh, to have the friends that I have to uh, help me grow. Um, I appreciate your all's comments. I will do my best to comment back to every single one of you. I promise I will. It might take me a little bit, but I promise I will because I sharing these stories that I know and trying to investigate uh, these ghost stories these cryptid stories a little bit of everything I think will help us grow as a society you know maybe maybe I could prove something you know wouldn't that be awesome and y'all would be there to be a part of it that'd be so cool to me but anyway all right guys so I'm going to keep searching. I'm going to keep hiking. If I stumble on anything else, because I've got a long way back. Um, and, yeah. So, until next time. See y'all. So, looks like I found... I don't know if that's blood or... This isn't a sap type of tree. Splattered on a tree. So, I'm not really sure what happened here. Alright. Get all that beautiful trillium. I managed to find a little bit better of a trail. Now that's interesting, an old fire pit. A 
And that's been here for a long time. Look at the moss growing on those rocks. Oh, it looks like there's blood on this one. You'll see that? Looks like it's dried blood. Huh. Doesn't look like the fireplace has been used for a while. Now my theory is that these people use the trees to hunt. Because a lot of these stories indicate that they are excellent climbers. For example, they have um, a lot of these encounters happen outside of waterfalls. And a lot of people will see them even in open areas, um, like established, frequent, frequently, frequented places will see these feral people uh, climbing up the side of a, a waterfall. And for those of you all who do boar hunting, um, mainly with spear, you know that you attack from the trees. So you get to a high point and you come down on the boars. So you don't risk the remainder of them attacking you. So, there's a good possibility that that is actually what is happening here. Ugh. Sorry. But yeah, guys. Appalachian feral people. And beautiful walk through the North Carolina and Tennessee mountains. I love the mountains. Absolutely love them. You know, if the world goes to pot, this is where I'll be. <clears throat> Alright guys, I'm going to try to figure out my bearings and move on to the next spot.